With much of the world's attention shifted to the Middle East, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky is trying to keep his country's protracted and largely stalemated conflict with Russia on the minds of worldwide political leaders. Speaking at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, Zelensky is warning Western powers against underestimating the scope of Russian aggression. If anyone thinks this is only about us, this is only about Ukraine, they are fundamentally mistaken. Possible directions and even timeline of a new Russian aggression beyond Ukraine become more and more obvious. Let me ask very honestly, which European nation today can provide a combat-ready army on par with ours, holding back Russia? Zelensky did meet with NATO chief Jan Stoltenberg along with other officials and global business leaders to discuss continuing financial aid to Ukraine and plans for the country's post-war reconstruction. And there's still an ongoing battle in the EU over funding for Ukraine as Hungary is holding up the $50 billion four-year Ukraine facility package. Hungarian President Viktor Orban vetoed the deal back in December, saying the aid should not come from the bloc's common budget. Now, he has offered two key demands to lift his veto, splitting the aid into four parts and extending a deadline for COVID-19 relief spending. At the World Economic Forum, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said that the EU will give aid with or without Hungary's approval. It's important uh, to engage with all 27 member states of the European Union to get um, the 50 billion euro for four years for Ukraine up and running. Um, and this is the phase we're in right now. It's a preparation for the extraordinary European Council on the 1st of February. It's hard work. We have discussed many different issues. For me, it's very important. My personal priority is to have an agreement by 27. Now, unanimity is required for decisions affecting the EU budget. The 27 leaders will try to salvage this funding package for Ukraine when they meet again in a few weeks on February 1st. Okay, to talk more about the uncertain future of Ukraine, we're joined now by Anton Fariashin. He is a professor of history at American University. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we certainly do appreciate it. You know, it was, by all accounts, a very powerful speech by Zelensky. He was greeted by standing ovation, applause. But did economic and world leaders hear anything new this time as he is seeking more aid? No, Sean. Unfortunately, they uh, haven't. Uh, they've heard the same formulas that Zelensky has used for the past two years. And unfortunately, they're losing traction with the majority of the Western publics. And they've had no traction with the uh, global majority, the global south, uh, all of the countries that haven't joined the anti-Russian sanctions and their combined populations total about 85 percent of the, the planet's population. So uh, this was a very useful photo op. It was an attempt by Vladimir Zelensky to remind the world that is uh, losing its focus on Ukraine about the importance of the conflict. But even during the so-called peace conference mm -hmm. uh, that preceded the official opening of the Davos, I certainly didn't see any major changes whatsoever. Yeah, but we did sit here from uh, the EU chief saying, look, we're going to find a way to give aid to Zelensky. What do you make of that? So I think that the, the EU will find a way to give aid to Zelensky. It's, uh, it may be less than the $50 billion. Um, if it, if um, the EU starts uh, slicing up that aid into packages, which is what the Hungarians and also the Slovaks, by the way, also mm -hmm. uh, want, uh, then it will be less money. But the broader question here again, Sean, is what difference will it make? The Ukrainian state budget right now is in a deficit of about $43 billion. Those are Ukrainian figures. And most of that money needs to go to pay the pensions and the um, uh, the, the monthly wages of uh, state employees. In addition to that, you have the military expenses. So even if the EU should clear the 50 billion split, split up, however, it will be split up. I doubt that it will have any strategic military value because ultimately all of this money will not make a huge difference unless the war comes to an end and investment can start going into Ukraine. A couple of things kind of come to mind, especially at a big event like this. We know that so much is done in these side meetings, either with 
meeting with uh, business titans or meeting with government officials. So really, how important is it for Zelensky to corner people and say, look, we need help? And then uh, secondly, how does Zelensky continue to rally his nation, knowing they don't have two nickels to rub together right now and there's just no end in sight? Yeah, unfortunately for Vladimir Zelensky and his administration, um, rallying the nation is becoming increasingly difficult. Uh, I, I'm following closely the Ukrainian chats and the the, uh, the public fora, and they are full of increasingly uh, pessimistic uh, views of where this war is going, which is precisely why the uh, attempt to raise another 500,000 uh, recruits is running into such enormous problems. People don't want to uh, serve any longer. Uh, the money isn't there, and the general mood in the nation is radically different from what it was a year ago. As for Zelensky cornering business leaders, Again, he is doing the absolute best that he can, but he's putting the cart before the horse. Mm -hmm. No one will invest in Ukraine as long as there is a risk of a Russian Kagibur or Kinjal missile destroying uh, a brand new investment, especially if it's uh, in the military sector. No one in their right mind is going to pour millions, let alone billions of dollars into investments. So first, the war has to be uh, uh, finished with, and that means negotiating with the uh, Russians. And then Vladimir um, Zelensky will find out just how difficult it will be to raise money, because after the right. war is over, it will be money for the uh, economy and no longer for holding back the Russians. You know, Anton, I think we all remember when Zelensky really burst on the scene, defending his nation, wearing that olive drab sweater, and everybody really you know, kind of amazed at this guy standing up. But that seems so long ago now with the ongoing crisis in Gaza and Israel. It's that threat, that threat to spread beyond the Red Sea, in many ways has simply pushed Ukraine and Russia out of the news cycle. So what's at stake there? Couple that with waning interest from U.S. lawmakers, it is not a great equation for Zelensky. It is not um, at all. Uh, and it's not just that the Middle East um, uh, crisis uh, has eclipsed uh, the centrality of Ukraine. It's also, of course, uh, the fact that Ukraine received an enormous amount of money and weapons uh, for an offensive that uh, both its own leadership and uh, people who supported it in the West talked up uh, above and beyond any realistic expectations. And with the implosion of the summer offensive, which ended up actually losing Ukraine, uh, slightly more territory than it gained, right. the Russians are now remorselessly but very slowly gaining uh, territory. This is not lost on the Ukrainian people who are refusing to go into the to enlist at the same rate that they were in the beginning of this conflict. So I'm afraid that for all of the photo ops at Davos, uh, the realities on the ground are n not in Zelensky's favor. Yeah. You're painting a pretty grim, prick, uh, grim picture of the uh near future there. Let's talk about, and we did a bit about reconstruction, rebuilding, you saying that they're actually trying to put the cart before the horse. Okay, but how would reconstruction even happen at this stage? Well, it can't. First, the war has to come to an end, and then the question of territorial settlement will have to be uh, decided before reconstruction uh, begins. Um, there's been devastation all over Ukraine. The question is, where will the European or American, let's call it Western money, go? Sure. Towards Western and Central Ukraine or towards the, the East, which has suffered more simply because the ground fighting has been happening there. What is the territorial settlement going to be? I don't foresee the Russians giving up the territories that they have, uh, they have seized. They've already started reconstructing parts of uh, places like Mariupol uh, and in the Donbass. Um, none of that is happening in the West yet. So war over first, then territorial settlement, and only then can Ukraine uh, begin to think about uh, reconstruction and the West will, will be able to start investing in the country. Yeah, it certainly appears Zelensky and Ukraine are headed for some very long, cold, dark days in the throes of winter. Anton uh, Fedyashin, thank you so much. As always, we appreciate your time. Thank you, Sean.